everybody, my name is Jordan, and in my talk today, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering, what on earth is uh, an Irish kid doing on stage? Uh, well, I'm going to try to answer that question for you. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about my story, uh, a bit about what I do, some of my projects, uh, just about me. Uh, but first, I'll just give you a bit of an introduction. So, I'm 16 years old. Uh, I'm from Waterford, which is a, a small city in Ireland. Uh, best known for our bread rolls and our thistle, so that's that's my city. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm I'm a self-taught programmer. Uh, I've been programming since I was nine years old, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty much a normal kid as well. Uh, but but why am I a programmer? Uh, why why do I do what I do? Uh, well, to answer that question, uh, we're going to have to rewind a little bit. Uh, to go back to when I was just a little kid, um, I, I I was pretty much a normal kid most of the time. Uh, I played video games like my friends. I played a lot of sport like my friends. Uh, but I always noticed there was something different uh, that sort of separated me from, from everybody else. Uh, for example, uh, I used to sell my old sort of toys to people. Uh, I used to sell martial art lessons to my friends, uh, even though I had no clue what martial arts was about. Uh, so um, I pretty much had this sort of knack to, to run my own businesses. Uh, I pretty much had this entrepreneurial mindset. And basically, uh, I just wanted to make my own, my, uh, my own businesses. But the problem was that I didn't really have anything to make a business about. Like, I didn't know anything about karate. Uh, I didn't want to sell toys. Uh, so I had to find something I was good at. So fast forward a couple of years, uh, I had a, a pretty big interest in a game on the internet called Club Penguin, which is pretty much this game where you, like, play as a penguin and, like, talk to people and, like, play different games with your friends. So it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. But basically, some, some, some of the users who, who play Club Penguin uh, made their own sort of websites and, and blogs about the game. And basically, I just thought this would be sort of a fun interest or a fun hobby. Uh, so one day, I, I got my grandmother to buy me a book on programming. Uh, I started watching videos on YouTube, uh, started reading different websites, uh, pretty much just how to, to build my own, my own, my own blog. Uh, so eventually, I, I did it, built a Club Penguin website, started like building a bit of an audience, like a bit of a fan base. And I realized that like this was what I wanted to do. I wanted to build things on the computer. On the computer. So I, I, I made my Club Penguin website. Uh, and after sort of a, a few years, I was, I was in search of a new challenge. Uh, so I did a bit of research. And I found the iPhone developer kit, which is pretty much what Apple used to sort of give developers access to make their own iPhone apps and games. Uh, so this is pretty much what I wanted to do. Uh, so I looked a bit about it, and I realized that for those who want to make iPhone apps, you need to have an Apple Mac. And for those who don't know, Apple Macs, especially for me, are really expensive. Uh, so I needed to get a bit of help if I wanted to buy one. Uh, so, so one day, I went to my parents, and I pretty much said to them, like, will you buy me this Mac? And my parents, who didn't really have a clue what I wanted to do, thought I wanted to play games rather than make my own. So they said no. Uh, so then I went to try a few different methods. I kept asking them, kept bugging them. They still said no. Uh, so eventually I had to go to the last resort, which was, was fraud. Um, so, so one day I forged a letter from an Apple executive uh, pretending to be this big businessman, like the CEO of Apple, something like Steve Jobs or something. And I sent it to my parents, uh, sort of explaining the advantages of buying a Mac and like that, that those would have for me. Uh, so luckily, my parents believed it, and I, they bought me a Mac. So, <laughs> yeah. So now I have my Mac. Uh, so now I sort of started to learn a bit about how you could like make your own iPhone app and things like that. Uh, started testing around with a bit of a game until I had something of a finished product. Uh, the game was called Alien Ball vs. Humans, and pretty much it was like this mobile version of Space Invaders, like the old arcade game. Uh, so like these like really, really bad images that I drew uh, like on the computer, and I just put them all, like I made the game, and I launched it on the App Store. 
uh, initially for me, I saw this as sort of an experimental project. Like I didn't expect to, to make any money out of it or anything like that. Uh, but luckily for me, like um, the game just sort of blew up like on the app store and like it went to number one in charts in, in Ireland and the UK and a, a ton of other different countries, uh, which was really cool because I made a bit of money from it. Uh, so uh, that got me thinking, like, uh, if I could make money from making my own games, then maybe I could see it as sort of a commercially viable business. And maybe I could see this as like what I could use my entrepreneurial mindset for. Uh, so I did a bit of research, uh, watched a few videos, and pretty much made my own company from there, uh, which was my first my first company. Uh, so I called it Casey Games. Uh, and basically, I launched a number of different more iPhone games, uh, different variety, and uh, they all did pretty successful. Uh, so that was that was Casey Games. That was my first business. Uh, and moving on to my next business, I took a completely different path from, from gaming. Uh, uh, so the idea for my next project came when I was in school. Uh, so one day, uh, I was in class uh, with, with my, my, suit, my, my class, my teacher, and basically she had this sort of big black book which she used to keep all the information about our, our school, like our attendance, our exam results, information, just general information. And basically, I don't know how, but uh, she managed to lose that book and pretty much lost all the information. I think it was one of my friends who stole it, but uh, she pretty much lost all, all the information that she, she had kept of like all the students for the whole year. Uh, so I, I had a, an idea to pretty much make a more secure and more efficient way to manage all this. And so I created an app called Teachware. Uh, so pretty much it was a, a cloud-based management system. So she could like enter all her information on the computer and manage it all in the cloud. So yeah, it, it did pretty well. Like I had uh, like 10,000 users, uh, mainly based in South Africa and India. So I was managing that from my, my little house in like Ireland. Um, so there was a bit of a problem with it though because of the time zone. I had to pretty much stay awake all night like dealing with different customers and things like that. So when I went to school the next uh, morning, I was like really tired. So unfortunately, I had to, to give up on Teachware. But um, yeah. So now I'm on to my next project. Uh, it's 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 again it's again it's kind of different from what I've done before. It pretty much combines my interests in gaming and education together. So over the past few years, uh, from doing different talks and just learning about what I want to do, uh, I've I've garnered this huge passion for education and in particular like technological education. Uh, because programming, I think, is a really, really, really cool tool uh, that can be used by anyone uh, for creative, like business, for everything. But unfortunately, kids in, in, my, in my country and many other countries don't have the opportunity to learn about it. Uh, so I think this is a big problem. So I wanted to create an application that combines a fun multiplayer environment with a visual programming language that can pretty much teach kids how to code while they play a game with their friends. Uh, so the game will be called Kids Code, and basically, like kids could create their like little characters, similar to like Club Penguin, like go around this world, but at the same time, like make their own games and like do it with their friends. So pretty much, they'd be able to learn the fundamentals of programming. They'd also learn collaborative skills, the teamwork skills by working together, and also creative skills, which could be really beneficial uh, to their futures because even having the most basic skill set of programming could be really, really uh, beneficial if you want a job in the future. Uh, so that's Kids Code. So pretty much those are so some of the businesses I've worked on in the past. Uh, but I also have other interests. Like I'm a kid as well, so like I have I have lots of interests. Uh, I really love sport, and in particular I love playing football. Uh, so something that I really like doing is combining my interest in business and technology with my interest in football. So uh, I've made a couple of like football games, football apps. Uh, but I've been really lucky uh, on one particular occasion. Uh, in February of this year. Uh, so basically, I was at a conference in Madrid. Uh, I was speaking at it. And after the conference, I sort of did an interview with the Spanish TV network. Uh, pretty much like just like did an interview, went home, didn't expect anything to happen. Uh, but I got an email the next day uh, from the assistant of Florentino Perez, who is the president of Real Madrid. So uh, pretty much he, he saw my interview on TV, uh, had an interest in me and in me and invited me to be a presidential guest at a Real Madrid game, uh, which was <laughs> which was pretty surreal. Um, so, so I went to Madrid. I got to meet meet Florentino. I got to like go to a big Madrid game, 
and I got to meet like players like Cristiano Ronaldo, like Gareth Bale, like Benzema. I got to meet them all. So that was that was pretty cool. And that's just an example about how I combine my my business and my other interests, which I'm really lucky to be able to do. Uh, yeah. So I've also I've also worked with the European Union a couple of times, uh, kind of giving a young person's perspective on their digital agenda. Uh, yeah, I've done I've done a I've done a few uh, cool things with what I've been able to do. Uh, just just to, to like finish off, like I'll just tell you a bit about like what it's like to be a young entrepreneur. Like obviously there are a lot of advantages to what I do, but at the same time there can be some disadvantages to what I do. So for example, an advantage uh, is it was mentioned earlier, but like in ten years I'll be like uh, twenty six and I'll already have like thirteen, fourteen years experience of like working in the industry. Which is obviously pretty cool, uh, and it's, it's like really beneficial. Uh, also, it's also like it's 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 cool for me at, at a young age to be able to get a plug for my products. But because of my because of my youth, like a lot of like media organizations like to to interview me and speak to me, which gives me an opportunity to like advertise my games and my apps, uh, which is always good. Um, and also, I, I get the opportunity to like go to like amazing places and, and like meet really cool contacts that could benefit me in the future. Like I mentioned, Real Madrid, but I also do a lot of speaking like around the world. I've got the opportunity to go to the states a couple of times. Uh, I was in India, which was a really cool experience, and I was also in Saudi Arabia uh, this year. So that was that was pretty cool. So I've been really lucky in that regard as well. So, but at the same time, I get to meet really cool contacts that could like help me uh, in the future. But like I said, there can also be some disadvantages as well. Like for example, uh, it's hard to work full time because like I have to like go to school and I have to like be a kid as well, uh, which can be difficult to to manage sometimes. Um, but I think uh, in managing this, it's really important to have a balance and to have sort of an organization structure. So like I go to school normally, and then after school I work on my business for a little bit, and then on the weekends I just take a break from everything and just be a kid really. <laughs> Uh, yeah, another disadvantage that I've I found that for for kids like me, it's sometimes hard to be taken seriously when working in the industry. Like in the past, I've tried to go to investors, different mentors, tried to hire staff, uh, but because because of my age, it's been a boundary to me. Like uh, investors don't really see uh, like a viable opportunity in, in investing in a, a kid like me, uh, and like. Pretty much like they say, oh, this is a really cool idea you have. But because of your age, uh, we don't like believe it. Things like that. Uh, so there are there are some difficulties to to that. But I think that's changing because as more and more kids show how creative they can be and like create like really cool products, uh, people will start realizing with the right support and uh, the right tools that kids can do a whole lot more. Like Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook when he was 19, like in his college room. So like that's that's pretty inspiring. Like. And I, I think it more more stories like that could show what kids can actually do. Uh, and just before I finish, uh, I'll give a little bit of advice that I have. Uh, so the first one is is never give up. Like I've had in the past, like a ton of different obstacles, like whether it be something small, like a bug in my game, or something big, like uh, someone stealing my idea, and making money from it. But uh, because because I was motivated to 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 keep going and like. Uh, but because I was motivated to, to keep going and I, I was passionate about what I was doing, I, I managed to, to get a lot of good out of it. So if there's any bit of advice I can give, it's never give up. Uh, another, another important bit of uh, advice is get a support network. Like my parents were my support network. Uh, without my parents' support, not just financially, but like morally and like they've given a lot of time, I, I wouldn't be anywhere I am today. So uh, if there's any other bit of advice I can give, it's definitely find a support network whether it be friends family anything i think i think that's really important um and yeah uh, thanks very much for listening that, that's my story thanks